to World News Today. I'm Lise Doucette. We go now to Malaysia and it's been a turbulent year there in politics. Sodomy allegations continue to plague uh, the prospects for the opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim. He denies the charges and insists they are politically motivated. The Malaysian government and Prime Minister Abdullah Badawi also have their own problems with a resurgent opposition threatening to take power for the first time in decades. The ruling National Front Coalition suffered its worst election result in decades in early elections held in March 2008. It lost its two-thirds parliamentary majority in control of five state assemblies. In the summer, opposition leader Ibrahim was arrested over allegations of sodomy, elevating political tensions. And last month, Abdullah Badawi announced he would step down March next year, effectively handing over control of the ruling coalition to his deputy, Najib Razak. Well, actually joining us from central London is that Deputy Prime Minister, Dato Sri Najib Tun Razak. Welcome to you, to BBC World News Today. Thank you very much. Let me begin by asking you, and I know you're watching these events unfold in Mumbai, in discussion about whether there is an Al-Qaeda link. This is always the question asked whenever there's an attack of is by Islamic militants. Is this an issue that raises its head in Malaysia as well? First of all, let me uh, express our sympathy um, to the uh, Indian government and the people of India for the horrific attacks in Mumbai. We continue to support and to remain uh, steadfast in uh, cooperating with India and other countries in the fight against global terrorism. With respect to the situation in Malaysia, we are uh, ever vigilant. Uh, we are confident that we are on top of the situation, uh, but we believe that uh, we must continue uh, to make sure that uh, um, we can do everything possible, that there will be no possible acts of terrorism in Malaysia. And we've been uh, hugely successful thus far, and uh, hopefully with uh, increased vigilance and with the commitment of the government and the people, we will be able to ensure that there will be peace and stability in Malaysia. So this you put down to the effectiveness of your security and intelligence operations. Have actually there been any reports of some cells which do exist there? This is the um, uh, result of what we have done in the past. As you know, um, uh, our security forces have been very uh, successful in combating any form of uh, potential acts of terrorism in Malaysia. It is partly because um, of the cooperation with the people supporting the government, as well as the fact that we do have uh, preemptive legislations like the Internal Security Act in Malaysia, which has allowed us to take preemptive actions against people who are likely to cause acts of terrorism in Malaysia. Well, let's look at more traditional politics now, where the party, the ruling party that you're part of, is facing its biggest threat in decades, a real threat of actually being ousted from power. How do you react to that? Well, first of all, this is indicative of a very vibrant democracy in Malaysia. Um, we are, in fact, a government uh, that has been elected by the people. Of course, uh, um, we did not do too well the last general elections, but we have um, a majority, we have a, a good working majority. We have been denied the two-thirds, but we will draw uh, lessons from the last general elections. And the lessons uh, are very clear that we have to change. We have to embark on, 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 on a course uh, to make things better, to address some of the concerns, some, some of the legitimate grievances of each community. And hopefully, with the new measures that we will uh, institute, things will get better for us politically. Thank you very much uh, for taking time to speak to us here on BBC World News Today. Thank you.